Hey, it's Grady at Twin Creek Audio. Back in the studio finally. It's first video in a while. Just haven't had a lot of time lately. But today I have an unreleased Homespun Centaurs track that I'm going to mix on the analog console with some analog outboard gear and a couple of plugins in the box. So it's a hybrid mix. So let's go over to the console and check it out. So I'm here on the console and the song is so the song I've got today is called Believe by Homespun Centaurs and it's guitar, bass, drums, some keyboards, and some vocals. I've got some kind of strange stuff in here too, like a strange distortion kind of track in the background, which I think is right here if I remember correctly. And then three different vocal tracks, which is kind of the tough part of this mix is going to be balancing these vocal tracks, which are a little bit uneven in places. So I've got to watch that. And then we want the drums to really stand out and be really punchy because the song is a little bit up tempo, medium tempo. I don't know. So we wanted the drums to stand out. We've got to balance these vocal tracks and then just everything else needs to sit together nicely in the mix. The analog console and some of the outboard gear are going to take care of that for us. Let's go ahead and listen to this track before I break down some of the finer points of this mix. So the vocal tracks sound pretty good. I've got some compression on those to help even them out. On one of them, I'm using a channel of the ART TCS twin compressor system in one of the stacked modes with the opto compression and the VCA compressor after it. And on, on the other one, I'm using the LA Audio 4x4, which is an FET compressor. And that sounds pretty good. So that louder vocal track is going through the LA Audio 4x4 and the more subdued track is going through the ART TCS twin compressor, going through the optical compression first, followed by the VCA compression. Here's the vocal track that's going through the ART TCS twin compressor. It's hard to believe it could all fall apart and you're falling downhill towards some bitter destiny. You don't want to see cause the going is tough You got to go on though you've had enough That's when you try to believe That ART TCS sounds really good on that vocal track Now on the other louder vocal track I have the LA Audio 4x4 which is a FET compressor So it's going to be a little bit faster than the Opto on the ART TCS So let's check out the louder of the two vocal tracks. Then we've still got another vocal track after that that's got some effects and stuff on it. Believe we're still free Though I know you've been deceived Believe in me I know it's hard to see so that's the contrast of those two different vocal tracks and what they sound like going through those two different compressors. Normally I start with drums in these mixing videos, but today I started with those two vocals through two different compressors just to change things up a little bit, you know? So now let's listen to the drums and then I'll talk about what all I'm doing to these drum tracks. Ah, solo. Oh, those are cut switches. I don't want to.
So the drums sound really good. We've got kick, snare, then stereo toms, and then overheads, and the hi-hat mic is blended into these this pair right here, which is the overheads, and then a room mic, just using a touch of the room mic, and I'm kind of doing that to avoid some of the phasiness with the cymbals. These faders up here where I'm doing some parallel compression on the Soundcraft Sapphire console, we can turn these small faders into an additional auxiliary send and we can actually use that send to send to buses or a pair of buses like I've done here. So I'm sending the stereo toms out of these two faders to bus one and two. And I'm also sending the kick drum to that for a stereo submix that's going over to bus one and two over here on the console. And on the inserts of those buses, I have the ART dual limiter. So that's what's giving us a lot of the largeness and these drum sounds from the kick and the toms, not sending anything else to that compression submix, just the kick and the toms. It sounds really pretty good. The kick drum, I have a channel of the ART TCS compressor on that. On the snare drum, I have the Symmetrix 501 compressor, and that's really it for compression on the drum kit. There is some EQ on the drums, I'll put some pictures of that up here. We just got some low mids being removed from the kick drum and adding a little bit of high mids to add some attack, as well as a touch of low shelving and a touch of high shelving on that kick drum. On the snare drum, we've got a little bit of 12K high shelf being boosted. And then on the high mid frequency, I'm boosting a little lower frequency than usual just to get some punch out of that snare drum. The toms removing some low mids, but a different frequency from either side of those, and then adding some lows with the low shelving. The overheads always have to remove a little six to 800 hertz from those. It's just the sound of the room that I have. And then boosting a little bit at 7K and at 12K. The room mic, I've kind of taken a lot of the highs and high mids out of that. Well, not a lot, but just enough to keep the cymbals in the room mic from interfering with the overhead mics here, keep those cymbals kind of clean, even though we want a little bit of attitudes while we do have the room mic there. Next is the bass guitar. It's a pretty foundational instrument, so let's hear what this sounds like. This is also going through a channel of the ART TCS twin compressor. Yes, I'm using a VCA bass preset that I've tweaked a little bit on the ART TCS twin compressor. Now guys, on these hardware units like the ART stuff, don't be afraid of the presets. I mean, they're just kind of a starting point and you can still tweak the settings from there, which I almost always do. But those presets, I mean, they're maybe they're kind of stupid, but if you have to use a preset, that doesn't mean you're a dummy. It just gets you in the ballpark without having to go Google everything quite as much. And I think when you're creating music and mixing, it's better to work faster and you know stay involved with the music rather than having to stop and Google, how do I get the sound of this compressor in the ballpark for a specific instrument? So presets, you know, not always a bad thing. We've got an acoustic guitar that kind of carries all the way through the song. And one of those mics on that acoustic is panned in the center. The other is panned slightly to the right. And on the main acoustic mic, we have the DBX-163X compressor on that. So let's hear these acoustic guitars. Okay, the second microphone on that acoustic guitar, that mic, it really doesn't sound all that good. 
So I, I'm still going to use it though. I'm going to put it in there, pan it to the right slightly, and then I've just accentuated kind of an odd frequency. And that's just there to give it some space. The DBX-163X on the main acoustic guitar mic is boosting the level a whole lot. And so this fader looks like this weird sounding mic is too high, but it's really not because it's not that loud. And I've boosted a frequency, just fished around for one that sounded kind of good if I pan that a little off center. That's just adding a little funkiness and a little space to that acoustic guitar. Then there's this weird distortion track. It's a guitar. It's got some crazy filtering distortion and stuff on it. That's the way that it was delivered to me from Homespun Centaurs. I'm not processing that in any way except for the high pass filter on the console. So it's just cool. It's kind of sitting in there in the background. And again, the fader looks like it's higher than what you're actually hearing in the overall mix because that, that level is pretty low coming out of Reaper through the interface to the console. So it's, it's sitting pretty nicely, just kind of a background wash thing that's sitting in there in the mix. So I've got this echo piano thing going on here, which is pretty cool. It doesn't need to be too loud in the mix. It doesn't have any reverb. I'm not doing anything to it other than a high pass filter again. It already has that delay in the track. So we're just gonna leave that alone, pan that stereo pair out left and right. And we'll hear it real quick again. It's kind of cool. A little spacey. And we've got another cool sounding synth right there. And again, I'm not really doing anything to that other than I've high passed it and I've accentuated a frequency. I think it's around 2K here with the console EQ, just so I could pull it back in the mix and have that fundamental buzz of that synth coming through the mix just like I wanted it. Helps things layer together that way. Let's hear that section again with all the keyboards or maybe I'll put all three of those in. Here are all the keyboard thingies right there. So that was two keyboards, not three, but you know, you get the idea. We heard both of those. Now there's a, a really loud rocking guitar that comes in in the choruses. And during the mix, I also need to remember to raise the overhead mics when those cymbal crashes to add to some energy to the track. So that's gonna be some human automation that I can do here with these faders on the console during the mix while I'm also messing with these vocal tracks. So that's gonna be really fun and interesting to try and get that right. Mm -hmm. So here's that loud electric guitar. Uh, I'm not really doing anything to this other than I'm, I'm gating it on the console so that the noisiness of the amp and stuff isn't there until the guitar comes in here in a second. Where are you, guitar? Hello, guitar? Where are you? So that's a cool guitar part. I am pulling out some low mids and boosting a little bit of high mids and pulling out some lows with the low shelf EQ. I also have the gate on the console on that, uh, just like I already said a second ago. That's most of the things that are in this mix as far as the individual tracks. There is one more like vocoder voice thing right here that I didn't really talk about, but I didn't really do that. That's just something that they sent me and I'm not actually processing that at all. Uh, it's just sitting in the mix and I have it high passed on the console. So you hear that, that kind of mechanical sounding double. And so that's what this is. So let's see if I can play through this song and get this mix right. Now remember, I've got to ride the overheads up during the bashing like chorus breakdown section and then I've got to really balance these vocals. The rest of the stuff in this mix is pretty well balanced as is. Uh, the parts were played with enough dynamics that I'm not gonna have to ride a lot of these faders other than deal with these vocals. They're a little bit uneven in places. The recordings themselves are uneven. 
um, as far as the level is concerned. So we've got to ride these overheads and balance out these vocals and see if we can get a good final mix here on the console. After the mix as a bonus, I'll talk about the few plugins that I'm using in the box before these tracks are hitting the console and the outboard gear. So on the kick drum, I'm using the soft tube tape plugin that's set to the B type and the amount is set to four. So I really like that thing on kick drum. I like it on snare because that's also on the snare drum along with a trigger sample. In this case, it's the Dan Snare Z3 mic Dan Snare. And that's being added to the original snare sound and not replacing it. Mm -hmm. 